get the grayer hair every year. Some of you pointed that out to me. Thank you very much. Bad <laughs> hair? You look, oh, thanks, Brian. Yeah, I feel lucky now. Grayer than, than you did last year. Thanks. Um, but that is the nature of the toy business. It's, uh, it is a, it's a tough trying business um, filled with lots of change. And it's a fashion, it's a fashion business. So, you know, our challenge as, as a company with Hasbro is keeping up with that change every year. And as you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of changes at the company, both in personnel and in, and in strategy over the last few years. And uh, we can, we can touch on some of that today. I, I imagine some of your questions are going to, uh, going to touch on that. So, um, so first of all, I'm Daryl DeCreese. So I head up the uh, global brand team for GI Joe and my partner. Uh, John, uh, Oops, no, you're not. Nope. Nope. It's all Mike's fault. I didn't do it. That's it. You messed up my microphone. I'm John Morton. Um, I'm, I'm the lead design uh, manager at uh, GI Joe. Uh, right now, I worked on, on GI Joe for a long time, uh, going all the way back to the 25th anniversary uh, of late. I'm also working on Transformers for the Transformers 4 movie. So I'm, I'm sort of spreading out a little bit. Um, so it's just uh, it's always great to come to the convention and see you guys every year and just get excited and energized by being around you guys. Lee was delayed. Um, and 2013 basically became our movie year. So everything was pushed forward. And at Toy Fair, we wanted to give you a glimpse of all the figures and everything else that was coming for the rest of the year. So just so we had some newness there. So we kind of gave our glimpse of the entire year there. Um, and, you know, I will say that this year is a lighter movie year than, than um, we saw with um, The Rise of Cobra. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. You know, Rise of Cobra, it was a very big, ambitious movie. And it's one of those things where you're trying to find, you know, find the right, the right level and the right balance. And at the end of the day, Rise of Cobra, our line was bigger than, than the movie actually helped, helped sell. Almost with this one, we knew we were in a rebuilding phase with the movie. We wanted to get the movie right first, get the characters right, get the story right, so everybody had that, that Joe movie that really celebrated the heritage. And I think, you know, for, for anybody who was at the theater last night or seen it already, you know, I, I think, you know, we nailed it. I'll, I'll say that we're, we're very happy at Hasbro with the, the way the movie came out. We really partnered yeah. with the filmmakers this year. Thank you. To, to get that right, it was a lot of story sessions even before we got to do any product. But when it came to the product line, you know, John will touch on kind of the development schedules because I'm sure there's a lot of, a lot of inherent questions you have. Um, you, know, how, you know, how come this is on screen but you don't have it in line? You know, things like that. So we're happy to take your questions. But um, but overall, um, you know, one of the one of the things was we've got to find the right the right size of the line. And it's kind of one of those things. It's actually very. There's a lot of similarities to to Star Wars and in, in what you're seeing with um, what we're seeing anyway with uh, with Jedi retaliation. You know, the first Star Wars episode one. Um, you know, we went big as a company. We went too big. And when episode two came out, we kind of right sized the line, and in fact, probably undershot the opportunity. And that allowed us to come in and that and for the third one, episode three, nail it, absolutely get it right because we had the highs. We kind of had the, the lows or the middles, and then and then we came in and we really had that right opportunity, and that's kind of the way that we think GI Joe is is shaping up for us. So the first movie went too long, didn't you know? Didn't have a lot of the right beats, you know. Not saying it's a, it's a bad movie, but it wasn't it wasn't the movie that we know the fans wanted. Didn't have the characters there, and at the end of the day, you know, retailers didn't have the best kind of taste in their mouth for for Joe the first movie. Second movie, great movie, blowing up the box office, you know, on a global basis, it's absolutely red hot. Paramount has announced that movie three is in development. So if any of you have a good So that's where we are. You know, the first week after the movie, they saw the box office go, we're we're kicking GI Joe three into production. So that tells you right there, Paramount says we have the fran we have the franchise, we've got the story now. So we're on the building path. So the, the, you know, that is a very, very good part to, to get your story right. You know, and then we're looking at the toys. This was a leaner year because of the history behind us. And you know, where our eye 
is, is on you know, when the next one might be. So we can't talk about when that might be, but you know, now, now we're in a good track. So we're kind of in that, that same cycle of Star Wars. So our, our hope is that next time, you know, when we have a movie line, you're gonna see a more, you know, more ambitious, bigger line. And hopefully, you know, we can we have the time to really design it. That's yeah, that's in, in you know part of the whole reason we come to Joe Con is it is an opportunity to hear uh, personal uh, accounts from you guys and, and exactly what's going on uh, in your universes and collecting and, and uh, what are your impressions because you, you talk to enough people you start to realize patterns and, and sometimes there's some things you can do differently or you get insight from, from talking to experts in the field so um, part of me coming out here and Daryl coming out here I think is, is to reconnect with you guys and, and at that personal level to better understand um, what you think makes GI Joe work, so that when we are building for the future, we have uh, a good idea of you know what kind of roadmap we're making for ourselves. <coughs> that's well said, John. Well said. So that's we're here to talk to you guys, get your feedback. So um, let's go in. Mm. Can I? Do I have to go? There we go. So obviously everybody, uh, everybody knows there's a movie out. It's in theaters now, um, and you know. Yep. We, the, the trio of trio of, of stars, kind of like of the past three uh, generations, all happening at the same time. It's just an amazing cast with a great story, and we're, uh, we're seeing the results. So you're driving, right? Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, you can go out on the next slide. So we're just gonna basically give you guys our toy fair presentation, and then and then open it up for questions. Then you can go to the next one. So. Um, Sorry, back. So uh, the 10 inch movie ninja commandos, we don't have these down here, but you guys that have seen them. Great figures for kids that have electronics and, and cool action features. Now last year, I will uh, I will say that I demonstrated something called Battle Pot. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, for, for both the, the that our 10 inch roadblock has and our role play um, role play ninja kata blaster has. And, um, you know, I hope you saw how it was on the screen. It was totally awesome how Roblox used Ninja, ninja Kata, Battle Kata to uh, fight. Did you, did you catch that scene? Actually, no, I didn't, Daryl. Did I didn't catch that scene. That. So that, that, that really kind of illustrates. So this, this figure, Roblox, he reaches behind and he grabs his, his weapons. And the whole idea behind Battle Kata was it's a recombinable weapon system that mirrors a martial arts style of fighting. And that was developed by us and kind of installed with our game plan on what we think would be would be great, obviously, to be a good movie beat and support the toy line. But um, and John will, John will talk about development schedules. What we kind of wanted or installed in our game plan didn't necessarily translate to what you saw in the final films because we were kind of working in parallel. Yeah. And and that's one of the things that the filmmakers decided. Roblox was emerging as a fantastic character on his own. You know, he was obviously a badass commando. Um, he had that, that line in there, which was part of our backstory. You know, I trained with Snake Eyes for six years. I know the man. And you know, he'd be here if, if he didn't have another reason. That establishes a, a deep connection, which means that Roblox and Snake Eyes have a, have a core partnership. And that served the story, but the filmmakers decided Battle Kata, they did not need to, to cement that foundation that Roblox trained. He was a great hand to hand combatant. And you saw that as Roblox fought, especially in those close quarter fights with that uh, firefly. So, so the filmmakers thought we nailed it. We nailed what you asked for, Hasbro. Great hand to hand fighter. He's, he's got clearly martial arts background as a result of this guy's connection. But stop short of the Battle Kata. Anyway, long answer for, for why the figure has it, but you actually haven't seen it on the screen. Um, next up. Um, our 12-inch figures will start shipping in August. I don't think anyone's seen these in the, in the wild yet. Um, they're coming out great, um, especially with Snake Eyes and Storm Chat. The whole idea here, these are $10 figures, and they deliver massive amounts of value. Now, for the purist, these figures are not for you. For a kid, they're they're insane. Um, I don't know. I think I think there's some a certain amount of peculiarities. I have I have one of I have one of the Snake Eyes and the Storm Shadow in my office. And they're based on the, the really cool um, Pursuit Cobra and, and 30th anniversary versions of those guys. And there's something really interesting about having a giant. It's almost like those, uh, one of those gentle giant Star Wars guys. Yeah, they, they remind me of those, like sort of this giant version of the character I love. And um, there's something weird.
weird and awesome about them, but also mildly indestructible. So if you if you're a kid who you know loves to play outside and loves to you know climb trees and stuff, you can give him this giant you know snake eyes figure that comes with a sword and know that he's you know he can really have fun with it and play rough with it, and it's not going to get busted. It's 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 just a big solid cool action figure. So in that regard, I, I have weird fondness for these things. Yeah. Um, and uh, this was really a, a strategic line for us, especially in the Latin American countries where, um, where 12 inch, especially like inexpensive 12 inch, is, is still a very, very big uh, trend. And we, we launched these, we actually started with Marvel and when Star Wars came in, they did a big hit for us. So you'll, you'll see more of these <laughs> style figures you know, as, uh, as we progress um, either, either later this year or next year. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, wave one, I think everyone, yeah, everyone, everyone knows what it's getting Everyone knows wave one is getting ready on. Um, Please get wave two. Uh, wave two is out, I guess, to have it already, so. Yeah, um, right. Right. Okay, so, some, some good news. So, everyone's asked about these at Toy Fair. We originally said that our hope was we will start seeing these uh, come out in May, hit the shelves in May. So, that's actually not correct. Um, we got confirmation actually yesterday that the production order has been placed. Um, so China is starting to build these now. And um, the accurate timing is actually going to be closer to late July or probably the beginning of August. Might be a one. But guaranteed they're coming. So that's why you know you haven't seen any online, you know, with the with the online retailers any solicitations yet, um, because they, they haven't had the confirmation. Now we're go, we'll start to see that. So this yes. is huge news here. And the good news is these guys um, as you know, like Data Viper and, and Quinn, and some of these characters are figures that you know, Daryl and I have have a lot of heart for, and um, why well, I have heart for all the Jet Jump figures. But these guys, I will make sure that I do everything in my power to keep the process moving as fast as I possibly can. I've already seen painted samples of all these guys. Um, I know how far along the vendor is on these, and I'm just going to kind of keep keep pushing hard and work my butt off on these and try to get the sword as fast as possible. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's just, uh, I don't know what flies and what I'd like to be, but I, I think, you know, some we are limited by certain capacities and, you know, things. We've got we to literally put them on a slow boat to China, from China. So um, knowing that, you know, it's, it, Daryl's just being, I think, more realist. Uh, but I, I will do my best and I work really hard for you guys to make sure this gets done. So I think, why don't, why don't you just go through and talk about romances in the day? Sure, sure. Um, well, I'm going to move, sort of work, work my way around the slide. <coughs> Budo uh, is a figure that we developed. We were almost going to put him in the concept case last year. Uh, this is a figure that we had planned along with a you know, couple of other sort of ninja masters. Um, Budo is, is just a standout, crazy, awesome samurai figure that we had developed. Uh, He's got Japanese armor that's literally based on historically accurate Japanese armor. Uh, Dave Proctor, the guy who sculpted this character, um, is a huge um, fan of Japanese history, so he made sure that it's you know detailed to the nth degree, uh, and you know it, 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 that that explains why you know, there's antlers on the guy and stuff like that because it's you know it's, it's indicative of that style of, of traditional Japanese armor. Um, but in you know, the world of G.I. Joe, this sort of character makes perfect sense. Um, Quinn, we know him, we love him, we're giving him to you. So, um, he's ready to go. He's got his little Eskimo bag packed, and he's, he's uh, into it. He's, he's ready to go. Uh, he comes with some great accessories. Uh, this is a cool version of Flint that, that hasn't been uh, released. Not the short, the shorts. This is, this is epically the first GI Joe guy wearing shorts, which is really cool. Uh, and he comes with a lot of traditional inward weapons, uh, you know, different types of axes and skinning devices and stuff like that, which is cool. As well as a like a nice, powerful shotgun and some other cool aspects. Um, Ultimate Storm.